as a matter of fact, I had worked with Lee in um, uh, The Edge of Night. And I think that's how I got them. It just came to me, The Edge of Night. And also, he had worked at Screen Gems when I was doing Genie over there. So we had a kind of a passing uh, uh, friendship. Uh, Lee was the executive producer. He just did whatever executive producers. I don't, I don't know what they do. I just I think they draw their salary. They get it on. And Lee was good at arguing with the with the higher ups at the uh, at the uh, network. He was he was he was quite a guy. And then uh, Phil Capice um, was a nice guy. Uh, and, and during the run of Dallas, about year six or seven or something like that, <sighs> Patrick decided to leave and. And uh, Mr. Yeah, it was a painful period of time. So Katzman left, and and Patrick left, and there I was stuck with uh, uh, Phil Capice, and he was taking the show in a way I didn't want it to go. He was getting more glitz, like Dynasty, and more brittle and uh, glitz in the thing that, that Dallas always had kind of a raw quality to him. Thanks to Jim Davis, you know, it was they were still living on the ranch, you know, and and so I didn't like the way it was going, so I had to put my foot down and say, you know, I I really want Catsman back and I want Patrick back too, and everybody said, oh, well, you can't do it. And I said, I'm sorry, this is television. We all we all do things uh, any way we want to. I mean, I think he ought to come back. And they said, well, can't do it. I said, well, okay, I'm off the show. They said, what? I said, no, no, it's a big mistake, but I can't work here without him anymore. So things got really nasty around Thanksgiving. And um, Phil Capice was, well, he was the producer. And so uh, at one time, I came back to L.A. from Dallas and asked to have lunch with him. And he said, sure. And I took him to my favorite Chinese restaurant. And he says, halfway through, Larry, aren't you supposed to be in Dallas? I said, yeah. He said, what are you doing here? I said, I came to see you, had lunch with you. You came all the way out. I said, they're shooting around me. I'll do it tomorrow the next day. And he said, and I said, I really don't like the, the, the yelling that's been going on on the set. People are actually yelling at each other. The producer come down and yelling at another guy. It wasn't Phil, it was his, his guy he chose. And, you know, I don't take to that, and nobody else does. And I just want to speak up for all of us that so we're not going to have these yelling. He said, well, Larry, that's the way I produce. And I said, well, then you're going to have to go. He said, I'm not going. What do you mean going? If anybody going, it's you. I said, okay, that's all right with me. But if you want to talk to me, I'm not going to go back down to Dallas. I'm going to go to Hawaii and take a little vacation. You can't do that. I said, this is a free country. I can do anything I want to. You're breaking your contract. So what? You know, I'm not getting what I want, so I'm, I'm, I'm an outcast. I'm a brigand. And uh, you just have to eat it. Well, shit hit the fan. And certain changes were made. And Katzman came back and Patrick came back. But, you know, I hate doing that stuff. That's, that's no fun. I was upset. Well, we went on another four years, and this was my big money-making time. This is when I <clears throat> said, you know, I really want this amount of money, and I got it, and then it went by increments up a year. So I was making around $200,000, $250,000 an episode. In those days, it was just like nobody made that kind of money. So I got what I wanted. I had to fight for it, which I don't like doing. Because to me, it was just, you could see the quality of the show going. And that was what I was always pitching for, get that quality out, get that rawness of Dallas. <laughs>